In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about file input locations with WDL scripts. And as we've been learning, there are some different possibilities depending on your execution environment. So let me explain. So we've been running Whittle with Cromwell on both a single VM as well as using server mode on Terra. And we've been configuring our input file locations with inputs.json. Now here's where we start to see some differences. On our GCE VM, we've been using basically a local path. Now because we're on the Google Cloud, we also have access to files in Google Cloud Storage so long as the permissions are set up correctly. Now for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to do something you would not do other than for training. So in my public demo bucket, WDL Quick Start, which I've set the permissions up as public, and you can see here, Storage Object Viewer. Again, you'd only do this for demonstration purposes. I've uploaded an example file, input text, and if I want to get the URL to connect to it, I simply copy this here, so I copy the link address. So now in our workflow, what I've done, and I've already pre-catted this just to kind of speed this up, you can see that we, in our original input JSON or hello file JSON file, we were simply pointing to the local directory, input text. I've created an alternative input JSON file called hello bucket JSON, and you'll notice that the variable value now points to the URL to the file in the public bucket. So now going up a directory and referring in the inputs parameter to the hello bucket input JSON file rather than the original file, I'll simply run the workflow. And now the data file, if you will, is not on the drive of this VM. It is in a bucket in Google Cloud Storage. Now why you might want to do this is because the storage on the VM is only existent as long as you have this VM. Whereas a Google Cloud bucket basically is there unless you delete the bucket and the contents of it. So it's a common pattern to store uh, key files in buckets. And again, I would really urge you, and I'll put some links in uh, the video to make sure that you properly secure for any sort of production workflows. And here you can see that this worked properly. So now in the Terra environment, we have a little bit a different flavor of working with files. As mentioned before, when you set up a workspace, you get an associated bucket, and that bucket, kind of like a hard drive on a VM, is only uh, there as long as the workspace is there. So you can put files in that bucket, and like I just showed you on the VM, you could alternatively reference files for which you had permission to access in other parts of Google Cloud, other buckets. Now, in addition to that, you have the ability, rather than putting in the GS paths, to have a higher level aliasing of the system, and that's through the data tables. So let's see how that works in Terra. So here is the hello file workflow that we've been working with. And you'll remember that there's two variables. There's the file input and the amount of memory, which with this backend, will be configurable. So if we go into the inputs, right now we're using the ability to put in full paths. So we're running the workflow with inputs defined by file paths, and we have the path to our required input file to the bucket that was created with this workspace, and then we just put a value of 32. Now, um, if we run that, that's gonna be associated to the file that we earlier uploaded by clicking this button right inside of here. As an alternative, we could edit this path and we could put in the path to the public bucket here so long as our account had permission to uh, read that file. So we could do that. However, when you're working with a lot of different file paths, a capability that Terra has is a data model. So what I've done is I've configured this data model and the way that this works is you have a TSV file, which is basically in a spreadsheet format, and it has a required format where the first value is an entity, and then it's participant ID, and it's tab delimited, and then you have the columns. 
So I, I went ahead and did that, and you can see that I defined three participants here. So the first one is just a placeholder, which I could edit if I wanted to. The second one is the public bucket, and you can see that's the widow quick start. And the third one is the workspace bucket. The data model capability allows us to refer to these objects and their underlying storage locations via their aliases in the workflow. Let me show you what that looks like. So in the workflow, if we switch to run workflow with inputs defined by data table, and then we're going to edit this value, so we remove that. And then we select the participant, and then we select the specific row. If we want to work with the public bucket, we simply select that. We type in this dot participant ID and click save. And then we run analysis. Now, as I've done with uh, some of the other examples, I already went ahead and ran this. Notice it's using the public bucket data entity. So I'll go back to the job history and show you. So I was just trying the different ones. So with the public bucket, you can see that if you go into the public bucket, the input comes from the public bucket. Whereas if I go back to the list and I go to the workspace, the input comes to, from the workspace. So again, you don't have to use the data table, but it is a nice convenience uh, built into Terra and has a lot of applicability when you're dealing with what is typical, which is a lot of files. Um, in fact, you can create groupings, which are called participant sets. So again, just to recap, in working on a single VM, you can work with files on your local path or files to which you have access if you're on GCP on a Google Cloud Storage bucket. And when you're on Terra, you can work with files that are in your workspace bucket, so long as that workspace isn't existent. Or similarly, because it runs on GCP, you can work with files in a GCS bucket, and you have the option of using a data table. And once again, happy pipelining.